Hey guys, welcome back or welcome to Petite Cavi. In today's video, I will answer all your most frequently asked questions in the comment section. I love engaging with my community, so if you have a question that hasn't been answered in this video, don't forget to leave a comment down below. Now let's get these questions answered. How much vitamin C do guinea pigs need and is it absolutely necessary? Just like us, guinea pigs and primates are unable to produce their own vitamin C. Typically, the amount required is 20 mg of vitamin C per kilogram per day and up to 60 mg per kilogram per day for pregnant and nursing guinea pigs or guinea pigs under 6 months of age. Although they could get a decent amount of vitamin C through their daily fresh greens, it's hard to calculate the exact amount they receive, so adding a supplement is super helpful and will ensure the best nutrition possible. Vitamin C degrades as soon as the vegetable is picked, and then you have to think about the time spent in transport, and then the storage, and then it makes its way to our fridge. It's always best to buy local when available to help local businesses but also to help the environment and ensure the freshest ingredients possible. Guinea pigs that don't get enough vitamin C are at risk of scurvy. Yes, scurvy. That disease your mom told you about when you didn't drink your orange juice in the morning. A vitamin C deficiency can lead to several health problems such as fragile blood vessels which can cause internal bleeding, abnormal cartilage and bone formation, and also painful swelling of limb joints just to name a few. I would suggest vitamin C supplements every two days at minimum and ensure to feed your fur babies a proper daily of 80% hay, 15% vegetables, and 5% pellets. As with humans, any extra vitamin C that the body does not need will be excreted through urine. I only have one guinea pig, is that bad? Should I get another? I like to remind people that guinea pigs are gregarious animals and need at least another guinea pig to be happy and healthy. As much as we try, we will never be able to replace the connection between two guinea pigs. Knowing that two is better than one, I think it's super important if you consider investing in a guinea pig to be able to afford two, which includes the animal, the cage, the food, the care and all the rest that is needed to care properly for guinea pigs. They are fearful animals and can connect with other guinea pigs when they need some extra support or to feel safe. Oftentimes, female guinea pigs will die of loneliness and depression if they are without a friend. Male guinea pigs will establish dominance between themselves and then be able to live in harmony. Females live best in groups and males in pairs. In the year 2021, we have enough resources and enough information and evidence on proper care for guinea pigs, and we should all know to never only adopt one, despite what the pet store might tell you. Note that Switzerland even has a law since 2008 that prohibits its inhabitants from owning only one guinea pig for the sake of the animal. Not only are they great with regulating what goes into their food and their supplements, they are also great with the mental health and well-being of their humans, guinea pigs. We hope that Switzerland will be able to inspire several other countries on this path. My cage isn't big enough, is it really that bad? The reason there is a minimum space requirement is an absolute must and not a suggestion. The cage guidelines are there to help guide us to provide the best care for our fur babies. Think about it for a minute, and put yourself in your guinea pig's imaginary shoes. Side note, does anyone know where I can get some cute guinea pig shoes? How comfortable would you spend your entire day in a tiny one bedroom where you eat, sleep, use a washroom, and get your exercise all in the same small square footage? You wouldn't get very far with your daily steps. Imagine going around in small circles all day long. If you are able to invest in a bigger cage, you can still use a smaller cage. For instance, think about using the smaller cage for transportation or when one fur baby needs to be quarantined when they are sick and needs some alone time. Also, don't forget about playtime floor time. 
taking your babies out for a little adventure on the human floor is great for their physical and mental health. My fleece bedding is smelly after only one day, is that normal? Your fleece bedding should definitely not be smelly after only one day. A good quality fleece bedding should only start to smell after 3 or 4 days. If your fleece tends to smell very bad quickly, it means the absorption level of your fleece is low and that the urine ends up staying on the surface for a longer period of time, which therefore encourages the formation of an unpleasant odor. Fun fact, guinea pig urine is practically odorless. If the urine has a fairly noticeable odor and is either pink or red in color, this usually indicates a bladder infection and a visit to the vet is necessary. A small tip I have is to avoid having too much hay lying around in the cage. Guinea pigs will tend to urinate on the hay and the contact of the urine and the hay will leave a strong unpleasant odor. Using spare pee pads is a good way to keep your cage clean for longer and therefore smell free for longer as well. When can I introduce fresh vegetables to my guinea pigs? There is a genetic and prehistoric reason that our fur babies are all born with all dentitions and are able to digest solid food only a few hours after they are born. In less than 24 hours, they can eat fresh grass, hay, pellets and vegetables just like their mother. As a general rule, you will only be able to adopt a baby guinea pig after they are 4 to 6 weeks old depending on the breeder. This is because they will be weaned slowly from their mother's breast milk and this will ensure optimal health. You can therefore begin to introduce vegetables to their diet as soon as you adopt your little fur ball. The portion of vegetables advised for guinea pigs is approximately 100 grams of vegetables per kilogram of weight. So if your baby guinea pig weighs 300 grams, they will need 30 grams of vegetables per day. It is very important to respect the daily dose as a lack of vegetables can lead to nutritional deficiencies and your guinea pig could also become fussy eater. On the contrary, excess consumption of vegetables will disrupt their digestive system and could even cause diarrhea or soft stool. My guinea pig sneezes a lot during the day. Is that normal? Guinea pigs definitely sneeze occasionally and are one of the many reasons I love them. There is almost nothing cuter than seeing a guinea pig sneeze. There are two main reasons why guinea pigs sneeze. There is either too much dust in their environment which can come from the hay or your little fur ball has a cold. If your guinea pig sneezes several times a day, more than a dozen times, and has watery eyes, a runny or a wet nose, and they seem less playful, less active than usual, and that their appetite has diminished, it's necessary to take a trip to your local vet. The condition of a sick guinea pig deteriorates quite quickly if not taken care as soon as possible. If they sneeze several times a day without any of the other symptoms, maybe you should try another brand of hay. Good hay should have a nice color, a good smell, have long stems, and not be crumbled. If you have any concerns, please do not hesitate to consult your local pet store or even veterinarian. As much as we have a great community filled with knowledge when it comes to health, a healthcare provider for your pet is always recommended. It's already over. I had lots of fun answering these questions and I hope this helped answer some of yours. Don't forget to leave more questions in the comments for part 2. Until next time, bye!